Hello everybody, my name is Eric and today we're going to look at a, an interesting way of effectively ratting people, but the way they've done this is clever because it doesn't involve using any malware. And you may think, well, how do you rat someone without malware? Well, uh, the answer is, uh, courtesy of legitimate software vendor LogMeIn, who have created a legitimate remote access tool, but with the unattended installer, it's quite easy to abuse. So I, I actually ran it once already just to see what would happen, uh, but we can run it again. First of all, I'm going to uninstall this. Now there are some benefits uh, to the victim, and that is that unlike a regular uh, remote access Trojan, it is relatively easy to get rid of these and they do have some identifying information rather than installing totally stealthily. But it's easy enough to drop such a file. Uh, this one uh, I simply found by clicking a few phishing links and they claimed that this was an invoice. This is essentially a cyber variant of the office supply scam, where they will email what they think are businesses, uh, saying that you need to pay some sort of invoice and there'll be an attached file. I've had a variety of these, some of which are utterly ridiculous. I got one trying to sell me several hundred thousand dollars worth of oil rig equipment as if I am in that business and I'm looking to buy hundreds of thousands of dollars of drills. Uh, and uh, they'll have a file that is sometimes disguised, sometimes it's openly in EXE, uh, but it says invoice. So this is a tool um, called GoToResolve, which is intended for use in tech support. And of course, these are heavily used in tech support scams. Now, one interesting thing about this tool is that it's resistant to MITM proxy, so we're gonna have to use Wireshark. Okay, so now we've got that set up. Uh, we can run the file and see if it does anything particularly interesting. Go to resolve installed successfully, and suddenly we have a horde of activity. So this is simply uh, over TLS, which of course we're not going to be able to read. This is HTTPS, given it's using port 443, and we can't decrypt it because they're not going to accept a fake certificate. But what we can do is observe uh, what our attacker does. Now, I've never seen a version of, oh, oh my. Well, they definitely, they definitely uh, like to send a lot of activity. Of course, in editing, I can find out what all of those IPs are. They're making very heavy use of. Of course, possible, unlike TeamViewer, that this may actually be proxied. And it's, it's going through rather than being peer-to-peer. -peer. There's a ton of sudden activity, and we've got all these processes running in the background. Antivirus app, device data app, patch management. I bet this is the one they could use to exfiltrate our data. Uh, I'm not sure if they've actually got a human running this or if, in fact, uh, the hackers on the other end are simply going to sit there and have some sort of script that just pulls whatever data they're after. It's sort of a clever new approach because it's not going to it's not going to flag anything. A virus total is never going to detect it. And functionally, these prefabricated unattended EXEs uh, work just like uh, any uh, rat that you would make from a typical builder. We do have a couple of logs, although there's no, uh, there's nothing in them. But that would seem to imply that the file manager uh, was activated a couple of times for not very long. I don't have permission to open token.2. Okay, well we can we can test this with a noise run an administrator notepad. Can't open it as administrator. That's kind of that's kind of malwarey. It's able to ship in remote code. Uh, and unattended. So basically this works. The intended use for a piece of software like this uh, would be if you were a company and you wanted to bulk install and provision your devices, this is what this is for, but it's also evidently pretty good for less legitimate uses. I'm just checking if it's shown any obvious signs of installing anything. Now here's another uh, bad sign. All of these uh, con hosts uh, which are not fakes, but these are probably a command prompt that's being controlled remotely because none of these are mine. Let's see what happens when we kill these. I don't even know if... Yep, we can kill these. That might cause some annoyance. If, if it's a batch file on the other end, that'll probably just kill it. If it's a person, uh, they might try and get in again. And because it installs as a service, it runs at system privilege level. Uh, hopefully the remote... Uh, Access isn't running its system, but it looks like it is. The only good thing about this is 
it's going to be easy to get rid of. So we just go to programs, uninstall a program, and in fact, we can get rid of it. Okay, it's gone. So it doesn't even, doesn't even have like an uninstaller. And suddenly all of these suspicious communications have also gone away. All of these, of course, are going to what appear to be legitimate IPs, a Amazon Web Services, nothing super fishy. Another indication of malware uh, that is not a default functionality of this software is it deletes itself to clean up. Uh, unlucky for them, of course, I have copies, so we can try this again. We can we learn more about where it comes from. We can also, and we also should check just to make sure that it hasn't hasn't left traces elsewhere because this is just being used as a dropper. And it was created, so this campaign started on the 21st of June, and it is uh, owned by Logmian, which coincidentally is the same company that owns LastPal, so these guys uh, sure know how to create security disasters. Now, if we look inside and unpack the code, we can see a bit more about how this particular variant works. Um, this is Binary Ninja. It doesn't really matter how you go about unpacking it. And you can find that there are these strings in here, uh, which is the batch file that it creates, uh, which also destroys itself. And then it creates a process. And this is pretty much all we're going to find because most of what it's going to do is going to be controlled remotely. And that's why it doesn't get antivirus detection. Two of uh, 72 are detected which is very low. I mean, it, I, I've uploaded Totally Homeless stuff on here and I've seen five or six, so it's not, it's not going to be detected. All of these domains, of course, show up good because they're legitimate and they're owned by a big company. There are a few hits on the sandbox just because they noticed that this is, this is a strange, this is one that Cape caught that doesn't look great. Uh, going into... Uh, moving itself into temp is a pretty common. Let's just check it. I, I don't think Elves did that. Moving itself into temp is a very common malware behavior. Uh, really, the two biggest red flags I look at, uh, just to quickly figure out if something is malicious, is moving itself into temp, renaming itself to random text, and creating fake Google or Microsoft folders. Now, it doesn't do that because it doesn't need to. So the final thing I'm going to do, of course, is off camera, I'm going to report uh, this ID because it's clearly being used maliciously. Uh, there is no legitimate reason to be distributing a installer like this on the public internet through anonymous file sharing sites. So that's going to be all for now. I just wanted to share sort of a new trend in the uh, rat space where you don't even need uh, any sort of malware. You just have to use this. I also wouldn't be surprised if whatever ID this account belongs to is probably compromised because... Threat actors are unlikely to want to give the kind of information that these business-to-business -business IT companies generally want for you to sign up for this kind of service. That's all for me now. Bye.